The Fast and Furious franchise has given car nerds like you and I a ton of enjoyment. But on the flip side, they've also done a high amount of scientific fibbing. Busters turbo hack, 100 miles an hour in reverse, doing a wheel stand while doing a burnout. Well, today we're gonna take a look at some of these feats of impossible physics and tell the truth on some of my favorite Fast and Furious myths. Let's go. A big thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. Now, over the past few weeks, I've had a lot of downtime because, well, And while Raid Shadow Legends may not get you flying through the air on a 250cc moto horse, it will guide you through exciting battles against noble kings and dark wizards, all while navigating through warring factions and uncovering hidden prophecies. Okay, yes, I see you, Death Knight. <laughs> Hi. No, I don't want to play right now. And last month, Raid released their Death Knight. Come on, dude. I'm in the middle of something. Seriously, please stop it. I will sacrifice you if you don't stop it. Cut the crap. Gosh. Anyway, last month Raid released their biggest update ever and their main event is the Doom Tower. I'm talking about a giant tower with 120 floors, a bunch of secret challenge rooms and 12 badass bosses to take on. If you want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description. And if you're a new player, you'll get your free Void Champion Bulwark, 50 gems, an XP booster, some energy refills, and even an Ancient Shard as soon as you get in game. And if you don't know what any of those things are, come join my clan and I'll help you out. You can find me in the game as Uncle Jerry's Donuts. So what are you waiting for, huh? It's easy, click the link in the description and I'll see you in game. Wheelie burnout. If your car is able to do a wheel stand, more than likely it's got a buttload of power. But if you can ride a wheel stand while doing a burnout, it's a car that I'll call a fantasy. At least that's how it's depicted in the first Fast and Furious movie. Dom and Brian line up to each other on a deserted road in what will soon be the longest quarter mile drag race in movie history. Toretto in his supercharged 1970 Dodge Charger and Brian in his Mark IV Toyota Supra. And as the stoplight turns from red to green, Toretto's Charger jumps off the line and does a wheel stand also while lighting up the rear tires. So we got a wheelie going on and we got a burnout happening at the exact same time. So first things first, let's look at what your car needs to do a wheelie. There's an actual equation that we use called the weight transfer equation to determine the amount of acceleration you need to lift your front wheels off the ground. And if we make a couple assumptions here, we'll need about 2.6 G's of acceleration off the line to pop up the front end. Now with a bit more math and some more equations, we can figure out how much torque that is. And that's about 780 pound feet of torque. And luckily the engine has enough to do that. So now as the car rises up, the center of gravity rises with it, we need less torque to keep the wheelie going. So up until this point, this part is totally feasible. Now in a perfect drag race scenario, all the torque is getting sent from the engine to the tires. Because the rear tires have friction on the road, that torque generated by the engine will rotate the car around the axle while pushing the car forward. And two important things are here. We have friction, which means wheelie, which means forward motion. But you know what doesn't move you forward? No friction, which means no traction, which means burnout. You couldn't possibly accelerate forward because you need friction to do so. And in this scene, he's accelerating forward while wheeling, while letting the rear tires smoke up a little bit. In any case, what you see in the movie, it's just not possible. We did an entire episode on nitrous oxide, and if you happen to watch that episode, I hope you learned something that would allow you to realize that a ball of NOS wouldn't explode into a fiery ball of madness, like how it's depicted in the first Fast and Furious film. Now, NOS stands for Nitrous Oxide System. It's a brand name, like Kleenex or Donut Media. Yeah, we're a brand. You want some brand name gear? Go to donutmedia.com. Now, the gas that's inside those NOS bottles is nitrous oxide, and it's what helps all these Fast and Furious cars get a burst 
shifts the speed when they're about to lose the race. It turns out that the combustion process requires that fuel to be oxidized. And in the case of a regular old combustion engine, that oxidizer is the oxygen component in air. Another oxidizer just happens to be nitrous oxide. So when nitrous oxide gets squirted into your intake and then sent to the cylinders, the heat and the compression in the cylinders break apart that nitrogen and that oxygen bond. And that oxygen is what's important there. By adding more oxygen, we can add more fuel and therefore we can get more power. But alone, nitrous oxide isn't flammable. The fuel is the flammable part. So in Fast and Furious, we're meant to believe that when Brian's Eclipse is on fire, it heats up the NOS bottle in the back that causes the NOS to explode producing the ball of green flames we've seen probably a hundred times. NOS! NOS! So once you know how nitrous works, it's easy to see that this was scientific magic or what I call physics lies. Okay, Buster. Turbo see if this works. Possible. Speaking of busters, one of my personal favorites in the Fast and Furious universe, an absolute disgrace of misinformation to us scientific folks, is the opening scene of The Fate of the Furious. Now Dom, he's in Cuba racing in the Cuban Mile against a very menacing looking fella. And Dom, he's in the slowest car on the island, while the other guy is in the fastest car on the island. So pre-race, we see Dom take a Coke can tab and attach it to the vacuum line on the wastegate of the car's turbo. And the wastegate, it's an important part of a turbo setup and it's there to regulate the amount of exhaust gas that can spin the impeller. That vacuum line is there to sense boost pressure on the compressor side of the turbo. So as your boost builds up, the pressure in that line also builds up and it opens a valve inside the exhaust housing. That lets some of the exhaust bypass, limiting the speed of which the turbine wheel can spin. It basically creates a leak to slow your turbo. But why on earth would you want that? Well, wastegates are calibrated so that you don't overspeed your turbo. If you get that wheel spinning too fast, the bearings in the turbo can fail, and then you got a friggin' blown up turbo. So your wastegate is your check valve. It limits the speed at which your turbo can spin. So if you were to clamp that hose or completely remove it, you allow the turbo to spin faster than it's designed to spin. But the result of that is you get more boost. Well, that's the thought here in this scene. So by putting that Coke tab on the vacuum line and then attaching it to a wire, he could pull that vacuum line off while inside the car, allowing the turbo to spin faster and giving him more power. But in the real world, it doesn't really work that way. For that increase in oxygen to be useful in making more power, you need more hydrocarbons. You gotta put in more fuel. So say you did this in your turbocharged car that has a modern fuel management system that can detect an increase in oxygen. Well, assuming your fuel system could match the requirements of the added oxygen, this wastegate trick could make more power. But in the fate of the furious, Dom's car doesn't have a fancy electronic fuel injection system. He's got an engine with a holly carb on top of it. And when you turbocharge a carburetor car, there are a few ways that you can do it. And in the movie, they use the blow-through setup, meaning the turbo feeds the carb. The exhaust gases spool the turbo just like normal, but then instead of the turbo's compressor side feeding into the cylinders directly, it blows through the carburetor. And for this to work properly, you have to jet your carb accordingly to match the amount of air supplied by the turbo. If you go and then change that amount of air by adding more boost via this wastegate trick, the carb won't be able to deliver enough fuel to match the air and you won't make more power. And since there's no way that you can jet your carb to allow for more fuel while you're driving, this wastegate trick is busted. Also, this entire scene is kind of whack. The guy insults Dom's girl, right? He cheats during the race, Dom wins, and then this guy's just like, hey man, you got my respect. And Dom's like, I don't I'm glad I got your respect. And then they're like friends and then guy cries. And then another thing that's wild is Dom wins the race and the car blows up, it goes off into the ocean and then all these kids surround him, just random kids. And Dom just picks up a random girl and he's just carrying this random child around in Cuba. Like no big deal, there are kids everywhere. We can just pick them up and hold on to them. And not only that, also, Dom wins driving backwards, which leads me to my next scene, and that's in Too Fast, Too Furious. 100 miles per hour in reverse. Oh, shit. Get wrong, man, he liked them apples! 
Jesus! Brian in his Mitsubishi Evo 7, driving backwards on a Florida highway, passing cars and outrunning his buddies while he gives everyone the freaking bird. Classic scene. And also, classically, not possible. In fact, we did the math, and you can actually calculate how fast a car could actually go. All we need is the max RPM, the reverse gear ratio, the rear end gear ratio, and the size of the tires. We pull out my TI-89, do a little quick math, it gives us a top speed of 36.65 miles per hour. Boo, boo, that's not fast at all. So while he's passing all these cars, they are more than likely going about five miles an hour to give the appearance that the Evo is whooping ass in reverse. Now, if you were curious about the scene in the fate of the Furious where Dom goes backwards, I couldn't find a ton of information about it, but apparently the guy who built the car says that it had a tractor transmission in it with multiple reverse gears. So you could shift in reverse to build up speed. Now, like I said, given how ridiculous that scene was with the Cuban NOS, the Busta turbo hack, I'm calling BS, but I have no factual information to back this up. Maybe it's possible, but probably not. It's zombie time. Zombie car apocalypse. Now you might have seen this video back in 2015 of two hackers wirelessly accessing a 2014 Jeep Cherokee and taking over the car using a laptop. It's brake, steering wheel, and the transmission, even the climate control, the radio, the windshield wipers, the engine itself, all could be controlled miles away from the comfort of this dude's living room. Charlie Miller and Chris Valesque, they hacked this Jeep over the internet through a cellular connection in the infotainment system. So, so far, Cypher in the Fast and Furious movie hasn't done anything that can't be done to certain cars. The real problem comes into play when we start talking about which cars can be hacked and the amount of legwork needed beforehand to hack those cars. Now, Miller and Valesque, they spent over a year developing the code necessary to hack the car and perform those various functions. Gaining access into the car, that's one thing, but getting it to do what you want to do is another thing. Each model car that got hacked in the movie, it's a different model and make, and with that comes more time spent figuring out how to access those cars. Also, the majority of those cars that are hacked in the scene, they're older cars, and they don't have any sort of driverless functions to them. Toyota Prius, nope. Taxi cabs, nope. 2001 Passat, nope. So Cypher says to find chips with zero day exploits. That's hacker speak for a flaw that's in the software that allows hackers to gain access. Now the zero day export for a 2001 Passat is a 2001 Passat <laughs> car is dog <laughs> So Cypher and her team would have needed to already develop the code to hack each of those cars, which is possible, it's been done. But then they'd have to hack those cars all at the same time, which might be possible, but not probable. And they'd also have to be able to take control of those cars that don't have systems built in them to be controlled, which is impossible. It just can't work, sorry. took forever to design these things, but the results are amazing. This is truly my favorite shirt that we have ever put out. That's what happens when you keep getting better at it. We got two different colorways. They're both black, but they got different colored inks on them. I'm talking yellow and white, or green and red, and both of them are fire. You better order both of them now, because they're not gonna last very long at all. I'm ordering 12 of them myself. We're printing them right now, so go get them while you still can. Donutmedia.com, tell them James sent you. There's actually no way that you can do that, but maybe tell yourself under your breath when you sh hit the cart. <laughs> I freaking love the Fast and Furious movies. They're actually super fun and entertaining, and as long as you don't take them too seriously and look at the physics and science of it, you're not gonna lose too much sleep. But now you know. Now you know what's real and what's not. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Bumper to Bumper. Follow us here on Donut at on Instagram, at Donut Media. If you wanna see some more behind the scenes footage, we cut a lot of stuff that we don't show on B2B. Well, we put some of that stuff on the Donut Underground. If you click right down there, there's a join button. Follow me on Instagram at Jeremiah Burton. Until next week, bye for now.